had a train ticket to go to Notre Dame. I had been recruited by Notre Dame, and that's where I wanted to go. I had to sit, I got to sit on the Notre Dame bench the year they played USC, and I was a senior in high school, and I was the only high school player that was on the Notre Dame bench. Frank Leahy was the coach, and uh, so that's that was my intention to go there. But the real, uh, the man that made the decision to go to Loyola, of course, was my father. When, um, as some of you know, I'm one of 15 children, and uh, I was the oldest boy at home at that time. Even though I was a 12th child, I was the oldest boy at home. So he said that there's no need to go to South Bend, Indiana to get a Catholic education. You can go right there to Loyola. Of course, there's a fellow by the name of Father Lorenzo Malone behind all this. Anybody knew the great name, Lorenzo Malone. I don't know where he got stuck with that handle, Lorenzo. But anyway, he, he turned out to be one of my very best friends and one of the real influential people in my life. And uh, he convinced my dad that I should go there uh, to Loyola, as opposed to my dad uh, to send the train ticket back to Notre Dame. And... small campus. We had everybody knew each other. Our classes, uh, our largest class maybe, I guess, 25, 30 students in the class. So everybody knew each other and from that standpoint it was a, uh, it was an education that I guess few today uh, have an opportunity to, uh, to experience because of the large classes and, and the immense uh, educational systems that we have now. So I was, uh, I was blessed to have that too because we all knew each other. It was a very friendly institution. It was a uh, a really a real fraternal situation where we all um, knew each other very well and uh, so it meant for a very nice uh, uh, stay in college. It was a uh, one that I reflect upon many times and it's uh, been very important that uh, that I, my life did take the turn it did and that was to go and get a Jesuit education and, uh, and to meet the people that I uh, that uh, I met when I, during my days at Loyola. Well, when you think, uh, I think back, I think of, uh, of course, uh, I had a great, great fullback that, that uh, could do everything, and uh, George Musacco, big George, and um, he was a great ball carrier. He used to complain sometimes that I used to make him block more than I used to run the ball, but because we used to throw the ball a great deal. And uh, being the, from a uh, Jesuit institution, I became a philosopher and, 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 a, uh, and a skeptic. And uh, so uh, Jordan Oliver said, when in doubt, throw the football. So being a disciple of Descartes, full of doubt. You know? uh, Skippy Giaconelli, who was a running back, uh, went on to play with the Eagles and uh, was a very, very proficient uh, professional football player. We had ja Neil Ferris was another running back we had, uh, who was outstanding, he went on to play in professionals, uh, very productive. We had Jack Dwyer, who played uh, running back, also a defensive back, played for the Rams. I think he still holds a record for fumble recovery for a touchdown for the Rams. Uh, then, of course, we had um, offensive line. We had uh, Moy Nepp, who was a great, great uh, offensive lineman, as good as... Uh, college. In those days, he was as good a lineman as I'd seen. Uh, we had Ernie Cheatham, who was a great football player, big tackle, who became a three-star general in the Marine Corps, and very much of a decorated uh, hero in the Korean and Vietnam Wars. And uh, we had Louis Mascola, who was a great player, Dick Nannery, uh, Tom Maktoff, Fred Snyder. Gene Brito played for us as one of the great players, I guess, uh, I've ever been around. I mean, he was the most, uh, he was the toughest, greatest competitor that was as tightly wound as anybody I've ever seen, and uh, he, he was so explosive. He was only about 6'2", weighed about 230, which wasn't, maybe 225 in those days, but he played like a uh, like somebody that was 270 uh, today. Or... We had Don Klinkhammer. We used to, used to throw a lot to Klosterman, to Klinkhammer, tongue tie a lot of play-by-play, uh, radio uh, men, but, uh, who was a great player, and uh, Fred Snyder, my roommate, threw a lot to Fred, and uh, let's see, uh, 
Well, we just had in defense. We had Rini Monroy, the mighty, the mighty mouse, was a great player. Louis Mascola, a defensive player. Uh, we just we were blessed with Mike Nolan, toughest one of the toughest guys I've ever met. And Bellarmine and Prep up in uh, San Jose, and uh, anyway, Hector Rubio, good fine player. Bill English. We just had a lot of good football players. I and mean, that's just a name. I hope I haven't left anybody out. But uh, Les Caniglio, a great uh, All City uh, player from Alhambra that uh, went on and played for us. And so we just had, again, we were blessed with a lot of gifted athletes that played together well as a team. In my uh, lifetime, to have, uh, you know, usually if you have a teacher, you have teachers and you have very few master teachers. And I was fortunate to have two master teachers as, uh, and, and as coaches. And it was Jordan Oliver and uh, Jerry Neary, who was my backfield coach, without question. They're the, as good as the best and better than the rest. Jordan was a uh, master at keeping cool on the sideline, except for a few things. A few times I can remember when he blew up, but, uh, but he was very good with me whenever things went the other way. Didn't jump on me. He just gave me that high noon look. You know? would be our game against COP. We'd lost the year before to COP and we came back and that was the, uh, the opening of the stadium at uh, College of the Pacific. Richard Nixon was there, uh, the governor, uh, Pat Brown was the attorney general then. Big George Masako pulls his way to the Tiger one foot line. What a job Russell, Nip, Nanbury, Maktoff and Lehman have done opening up those big holes for the running backs. Third and goal for the Lions. 33-28, Loyola trails by five. 34 seconds remain in what has been a sensational college football game. Five times the lead has changed hands tonight. Like a couple of heavyweights, these two teams have stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, slugging it out from the opening bell. 494 total yards for the Lions, and what a night Klosterman is having. General Patton, move over, make room for the Compton Cannon. 51 times the Duke of Delray has put it up tonight. Good for 343 yards and two touchdowns. Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing this kid needs is an agent. Here we go again. The Lions break the huddle. The Tiger defense is dug in, and they mean business. Klosterman is up under center. COP is going to come with everything they've got. There's a snap. Klosterman's going to keep it. Up over the center he goes. Touchdown, Lions! First of all, if you're a uh, scholarship, <clears throat> you're the um, luckiest man in the world to be our luckiest person. I shouldn't say man because there are women, of course, get scholarship today too. You're, you're the luckiest person in the world to be able to get an education at that level and surrounded by people that uh, are gifted, great students, people that will forever be a part of your life if you're, uh, if, if you're, uh, if you're smart because it's a, you, uh, formulate friendships which which should last forever would last for your lifetime anyway and um, so I say to them that it's uh, something they should pay back and I feel very strongly that uh, I want to give something back to the university and I will one day in the near future I hope that uh, to show my appreciation for the university for what it did for me to bring me together with these gifted people that I've uh, had this lifelong friendships with and um, I think that it's given me a basis to, to, uh, to build a life on. And I think I've been moderately successful in my professions. And I, uh, I know one thing, I couldn't be any happier than coming from LMU. And, uh, of course, to me, it's still Loyola University, but it is Loyola Marymount now. But from my days at the, on the Hill were something that I'm going to forget, forget, rather. And, uh, and I uh, appreciate the, 
the many priests that I met there, the, the, uh, the Father Malone, as I said. I mean, I had uh, Father Vic White, Father McIntosh, Father Graham, uh, just so many great pals, you know, that uh, that really had an effect on my life. I mean, uh, they they steered me through, some, you know, which that's a t difficult period of your life I mean, when you're formulating your life and you're getting your thoughts together and you have somebody that's, that you can rely upon and, and respect and... Uh, and so I was fortunate to be surrounded by people like that. So I, I will be forever grateful to the university. And, uh, and uh, as I said, you give back, though, for what uh, you were given. And that's what I think all of us should do. And I'm very happy that my class of 52 is, I think, one of the top classes in, in, uh, as far as giving back to the university and in in the program. So I'm very happy to be a part of that, that group of people that do appreciate the many things that we were given by the university. can happen to you if you're young at heart for it's hard you will find to be narrow of mind if you're young at heart you can go to extremes with impossible schemes you can laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams And life gets more exciting with each passing day And love is either in your heart or on its way Don't you know that it's worth every treasure on earth To be young at heart For as rich as you are, it's much better by far to be young at heart. And if you should survive to a hundred and five, look at all you'll derive out of being alive. And here is the best part, you have a head start if you are among 